Looking for the back. Putting the sweet for anybody. Oh, right, sorry, I didn't know it's not there. Right, okay. Quite happy for us to start then. Okay, are there any apologies? Joan Coombs' apology is, will be in. Any other apologies? No other apologies, convenient. Thank you. Just yes, Chair, I'd like to declare an interest in the item agenda on the 35 37 hours. It's well known. Okay, thank you. Is that declaring interest and you're not going to speak, I take it? No, I believe him. Right, okay, thanks for that. Anyone else? James? Can, convener, can I just, for clarity, can I get it clarified if this is a committee or a, a cabinet? This is, a, this, is a cab, this is effectively a cabinet. It's, it's, it's called the executive. We have a cabinet model of governance, and this is the cabinet, effectively, but members chose to call it an executive. You see, it's not called the executive committee. I mean, not an above-named committee. Yeah, but it's... it's right, OK. OK, OK. Thank you. Right. OK. Councillor Alexander... Just to, just to, 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 to move on to the minute, Councillor Alexander. Oh, sorry, Moving on to the minute, Councillor Alexander. Right, okay. Pages 3 to 11. What he was going to say, for goodness sake. Oh, well, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, well, well, Councillor Michael John, what I'm saying is relevant. We're moving down the agenda. The agenda is 8 3 to 11. The minute, call Councillor Alexander because he's late. Like Michael John, we're we'll moving to the minute. We'll you, we'll move to the minute. Thank you. <laughs> So, well, you see, on one hand, Councillor Alexander, Mrs. M Ms. Mikul John, Councillor Mikul John says, I don't know what you're going to say, and on the other hand, you say, I do. Well, you're yeah. minded there, can't you? Yeah, I yeah. wish I was. Can we just be sensible and move well, on? Well, exactly, be sensible. I have called them in. Any good will be Mr. Alexander and the members. Mr. Alexander, I'm going to be open. In it. Does Please anybody have any questions on the minute for any points I want to raise? I have one, and it's in relation to the central hub and it's just to say that during the debate on that I did ask that a report should be brought forward at some stage about the safety the amount of traffic etc on the, the road in front of the, the library so if that could be included I would appreciate that anyone any else Mr Alexander? Yes I'd like it to, to be noted the difference in style uh, from the, the manner in which the previous meeting was taken by the convener at that point in time Compared to your own performance today, Mr. Gobi. You want that noted? I'd like to. I'd like to add to that. See, it's not just the previous chair. It was the, pre the, the chair before that as well, Craig Martin. Actually, it, it dealt with the meeting a lot fairer than this and a lot more equity. Well, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm just going to dwell on this for a second. I'm disappointed that you don't think it's fair. It's done by the standing orders. Every Okay, let's move on. Is there anybody else getting anyone in the minute? If not, then there's a rolling action. Councillor Nimmo. Next convener, just in relation to right, item 234, uh, there was an update provided at the last meeting, but the, the comments don't seem to have been updated. Yeah, I'm happy to pick that up, convener. Yes, basically the, the update was provided, if I recall correctly, by Councillor Alexander following the COSLA meeting, um, but that the, the work is still a matter of in progress, so the, the comments remain the same. Um, as it's, we say there, COSLA and Police Scotland are working together with it in an effort to develop a national approach to this network is, is still ongoing. Um, other than that, Police Scotland have reverted to the position with each local authority as pertained prior to October of last year um, and our position on that is that uh, we do seek TTROs uh, where Police Scotland have requested these but the charge for those TTROs remain uh, waived at the moment. So once we have the report back, um, the joint report back from Cosland Police Scotland will report back to members and we'll be able to move forward with it thereafter. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, thank you. If not, we will move to the call for the Community Trust. Fiona and Wesley here will talk to that. Thank you, Convener. 
Um, I'll go through the, the cover report and then hand over to, to Leslie, who will take you through the, the detailed uh, plan. The purpose of, obviously, this report is to provide and present members with the, the heritage delivery plan that's been developed uh, by Falkirk Community Trust for approval. We say, I set out some background in the report um, to, to give members the understanding of why such reports come to, to Council and the, the different roles that the Council and the, the Trust has in uh, developing the, the report, such uh, plans, and then approving them. You'll be aware that the, the Trust has responsibility for delivering a number of services on behalf of the Council, and we note those in, in paragraph 3.1. In addition to uh, delivering services, the Trust has a, a key role as a policy advisor to the Council on those areas, and it's in that regard they, they bring forward the, the Heritage Plan and indeed other plans and strategies uh, on behalf of the, the Council. I know um, the, over a number of years how the, the Trust has fulfilled that function through a suite of plans noted in paragraph 3.2 which uh, underpin the Inspiring Active Life Strategy, that being the overarching plan uh, that the delivery uh, plans uh, sit underneath. To help ensure that uh, such plans are progressed timelessly, a protocol was agreed between the Council and the Trust in 2014. The main purpose of that was to ensure that the Council was aware of the development of such plans, were consulted uh, prior to uh, their being asked or the Council being asked to approve those. That two-stage process is noted in the report and includes provision for a consideration meeting. This is where there may be issues that would mean officers of the Council would want to discuss the plan in more detail before recommending the plan to members' consideration. In this instance, and with the Heritage Plan, such a meeting was, was not required. In terms of uh, taking forward this plan, the Trust Board considered a draft plan in August 2017 17, and that was approved uh, for consultation from that point onward. Following that, a consultation took place with the Council, including the portfolio holder, about how subsequent consultation would happen on the plan. And that included distributing it to all elected members for comment, uh, specifically asking some key national organisations for their views, and also asking specific local organisations, including Denny and Dunny Pate Heritage Society, communities along the Cairn and Friends of Keneal, for, for comment. A summary of the consultation responses was provided by the Trust uh, to the Council prior to this plan being presented to the Executive today. I would say it's not been practised uh, when we've done previous reports to include that detail in the report, but following concerns raised, I sent that summary to group leaders in the portfolio holder yesterday. That summary outlines not only the comments made in the draft plan, but also the trust response to each of the comments that were received. Changes were made as appropriate then to the draft plan, and that plan is before members today. In terms of the content, I'd like to hand over to Leslie O'Hare from the Trust to take members through the plan itself, and who will be able to answer any, uh, any questions on the plan and any detail within that. And following that, I would ask members to consider the recommendations uh, noted in paragraph 2.1 of the report. Thanks, Fiona. Um, yeah, I'd like to take members just very briefly through the plan. Hopefully you've had an opportunity to, to read it in detail. Um, this is the second heritage delivery plan that the Trust has prepared uh, for, for the area. And just to be very clear, it's a delivery plan for the area, not for the Trust itself. Um, it's about... Uh, trying to explore ways of using our ever-decreasing resources more effectively in, in partnership with uh, uh, professional organisations such as Historic Environment Scotland, uh, local um, organisations such as Scottish Railway Preservation Society, the, the plethora of local uh, history groups uh, across the area. Um, so we so I say it's a second strategy. So this document summarises what we, uh, we, in consultation with a number of organisations, felt were the achievements during the lifetime of the first uh, delivery plan. Um, we see very much that the plan is a, 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 a kind of catalyst for action, a call to arms, if you like, for uh, people to work much more in partnership together. Uh, and that very much follows on from the, the Trust's uh, um, culture and sports strategy for the area, inspiring active lives. So we summarise in section three of the uh, 
delivery plan, the heritage assets and strategic partners in the area, and that's pretty self-explanatory, but it shows the range of organisations involved in running facilities and delivering activity across the, across the area. Um, and as I say, that's obviously not restricted to, to, to the Trust. Uh, the section four summarises the achievements over the lifetime of the previous uh, heritage delivery plan um, and we break that down into <coughs> participation uh, and investment in, in projects. Investment has been probably at a lower level, uh, certainly developing participation and uh, uh, activity across the area has been the main threat. <coughs> However, we have, over the, uh, over the lifetime of the last strategy, succeeded in attracting in new funding for a range of projects. Falkirk Council led on the Falkirk Townscape Heritage Initiative. Um, Historic Environment Scotland received Stage 1 funding for uh, rediscovering the Antonine Wall. Um, both, pro both of those projects very much having participation at the heart of them. And we also recognise the role of that heritage plays in driving tourism into the area uh, and again working in partnership with uh, colleagues in the council, uh, Scottish Railway Preservation Society in delivering major heritage attractions in the, in the area. Um, we summarise the, <coughs> the strategic context in section five and in response to um, uh, feedback from the council we've, we've uh, kind of raised the emphasis on the, the single outcome local, local delivery plan uh, the sold and, and the role that uh, achieving the outcome set out in that, the, the role that heritage can, can, can play in assisting that approach. And we also summarise the trust's uh, business plan approach which is very much about, in a time of declining financial resources, about trying to build capacity within communities to build resilience and to enable them to, 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 to support the delivery of heritage and increase their capacity. I say we have a number of uh, local organisations who do incredible work within their communities and across the area, and how can all the partners working together more effectively uh, help achieve, achieve that? Um, and then we summarise the strategic priorities in section six um, and the, action, the detail of how that might uh, pan out is set out in the action plan in section seven. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions uh, that, that members may have on the, uh, on the delivery plan and on the consultation <coughs> that uh, Fiona previously referred to. Uh, just, just before members come in, Councillor Spears is a portfolio holder. Do you want to talk to us? And then, of course, Councillor Spears is now a member of the executive, therefore he can't move it. So that would be another issue, but he can certainly speak to it. Alexander, your behaviour is giving me some concern. Just let's get on. If we invite somebody to speak, that's the important part. Yes, do you want it to be moved by someone in the administration? Well, just for clarity, since we're all new at the game, anybody that wants can move it. You can't move it, that's unfortunate. Anybody else around the table can move it. So let's just, you can speak to your, the report. More than happy to do that. No doubt somebody will move it. Um, I would just like to say that if we have anything in common, then it is our common heritage. And if anything should bring us together, it's our past and where we came from. And on that vein, I would have um, no problem in advising someone to move this plan. There has been consultation. Uh, observations have been included in the plan. There has been work with uh, the Community Trust, which, um, as you're well aware, I'm not a member. Um, we need to realise that in forwarding our whole heritage and our history in this area, we will attract many people here. And the biggest business in this area is tourism. I know when I was in our previous administration, we worked constantly and we had great success with the Falkirk Wheel, the Kelpies down in Grangemouth, and I <laughs> thought that might have got a reaction. And uh, 
the, the Antonine Wall project. And Falkirk has lived to a great extent on tourism by these main attractions, some of them the biggest attractions in Scotland, some of them had millions of visitors, and it certainly helped put this area on the map and to be viewed in a much better light than it maybe was previously. So in adopting this plan, and let's remember this plan covers the whole area. It's no central to one area. It's covering the whole of the district. We also hope to, through and as was passed unanimously with the Falkirk Council Heritage Plan, work very much on the history of this area. If we don't celebrate the history of this area, no one else will. There's a lot of contributing factors <coughs> that will hopefully boost tourism greatly, and it will be in the form of commemorations with the first and second battles of Falkirk, I won't mention the Third Battle of Falkirk. I don't know if there's been a great deal of research done on that, but maybe that'll be somewhere in the future of our um, three-year plan to, to bring the, the history of this area to the forefront. But let's remember, we are a business at the end of the day, and we want the footfall in this area to significantly rise. We want tourism to increase. We want people to come here, spend money, but we must give them something to come here to do and to see. So I would suggest um, that we act in the interest of our common history, our common heritage, <coughs> and support this plan. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, convener. There was, there was little in what Councillor Spears said there that anybody was going to disagree with. Uh, we all want uh, the very best uh, for our area. However, there are flaws in this uh, document that's before us today. Uh, I mentioned at the Education Executive uh, about benchmarking. There is no benchmarking uh, here. We have no way of knowing how well the Trust is uh, going to meet its, uh, its targets and its aspirations and uh, what to, to check them uh, against. Um, so that's, that's certainly a major cause of concern. The Trust, uh, the, the clue is in the word community um, uh, convener and uh, in recent years the Trust has uh, fell short in my view of uh, living up to that central word. Um, first of all there was the debacle over the uh, let at the town hall and now we hear the Friends of Keneal, a much respected group within the area um, emailing members with, with complaints uh, uh, yesterday. Convener, because of the flaws that I see in this report and because of concern that uh, we don't have the full background papers here of what all local groups are, are saying, uh, I'm afraid I've got to tell uh, Leslie that I hear uh, mostly negative things coming from community groups about the trust. There's no point in uh, hiding it under the carpet. We want the trust to succeed, but it's got to learn to, to cooperate uh, better with uh, local community groups. Um, I, obviously, only, only yesterday um, was appointed to, to, to this uh, committee, so I haven't uh, fully researched the views of other uh, groups. But, um, you know, the Keneal uh, group does give me cause to concern. I think um, when Historic Scotland recognises the Keneal estate as being of national importance uh, in, in, in our country, um, I get concerned when the Trust dismisses uh, the Keneal estate as now the main public park for Bowness. There just seems to be a concern there, their there, there convener, uh, that perhaps uh, the people from Keneal do have some grounds to, 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 to complain. So because of the fact that I don't feel I've got the full background information which has led to this report coming forward, and because I have concerns that the, the lack of uh, aims, aspirations and indeed benchmarking, um, I wonder if you would be agreeable convener to, to um, take this report back for a, a month or however long is necessary for members to get this background information to, uh, so we can better avail ourselves of the full facts behind the, the, the situation. Uh, I want to be fair to the Trust, and as I say, uh, I and you know, 
common with many other members of, of whom we're hearing bad things about the Trust just now. There's a lot of good things uh, out there. I was one of the principal people that supported the establishment of the Trust uh, years ago, and I, I, I know it can do very well when it puts its mind to it. But let's not sweep away uh, the views of so many people that uh, are complaining to, to councillors. Well, obviously we have to hear what other members have to say, but uh, I don't think a month at the end of the day would, would cause any great difficulty, but I take it you're moving that. Yes, that now becomes a motion. Do we have a second for that? So would that be to the next meeting of the executive then? So, which will be roughly a month away. Fifteenth of May. Fifteenth of May, just over a month. Councillor Harris, things. Anyone else want to speak? Uh, convener, I would um, move um, the amendment that we accept the report as it is a strategy, and I think that there's further work could be done on the delivery plan. Um, the stra strategy, as ever, is a high-level strategy, and it covers all the council areas. And um, the strategy itself is not defining of what's actually going to be delivered on the ground. Um, it's, it works with the principles, and the principles are within the, the Falkirk Council's corporate plan and their single outcome agreement. Um, there, so that, that is very much aligned. So I have no issues particularly with the strategy. Around some of the other areas, I do believe um, that there are, are work to be done on the delivery. We need to um, recognise that our communities as, as equal partners um, and, and not just as volunteers. Um, and uh, I think that there's also work to be done in helping and supporting um, the, the community as our partners in accessing external funding. Um, I very recently became involved in supporting um, the, the Friends of Keneal and others in, in Bores to, to look at accessing leader money. Um, there are only certain areas of Falkirk that are able to access leader money um, due to the definition, and um, we should be maximising our opportunities wherever possible, and we have not been um, successful in, in taking up all of our allocation that, that's available to us. Um, so I think on the delivery arm, there perhaps is some work to be done in, in working with the Trust, but I believe that's an iterative process, as this is a strategy that takes us to 2023, and I don't think the Trust would be unamenable to working um, alongside our Council and the partners to be able to do that. But it is a high-level strategy that covers the whole of the Council area. I'm therefore happy to review this strategy. Happy to send up the formal rate to reply. Right, okay. Can I just ask before anyone else comes in, if you're a, I, I wouldn't want a division on this, but it might happen. Would a month's delay for the, the, the clarifications and things that have been sought, would that be crucial in any way? So wouldn't it cause a problem in any way to the Heritage Plan? Fine, thanks for that. Anyone else want to speak? Professor Alexander. Yes, in terms of procedures, first of all, I'd like to ask the Chief Executive have given the changes last Thursday. The fact that the, we don't have all of the portfolio holders on the, this particular body, where well, it should now be constituted as a, a committee. I, mean, I think uh, what, one of the decisions that was taken last week was that I should meet with um, group leaders to consider the implications of those decisions. So those are the sorts of things that will need to be considered in those discussions. Um, I'm trying to set up those meetings. Two of them have already been set up. And you know, we'll be able to get a much better idea after those discussions about what all the implications might be. What you know, that's much appreciated. The, uh, the, whether it's a committee or whether it's a, a cabinet, uh, if there's going to be a cabinet, I'd like to know if there's a precedent anywhere in the world uh, where the... Uh, I'm going to let you finish, but I'm going to say this to you. Mr Goldie, please, this, please. This, this, this let me finish for clarification. Well, let, me, let me finish first. I'm, going to, I'm just asking you, you're going to get the chance to finish. I'm going to give you the chance to finish. What I'm saying, what I'm saying to the committee is, you've heard, the, you've heard, well, is it a cabinet? And fine. You want to, what you've heard for the chief executive, which was in the report last week, was will be a report brought back after discussions with the, with the group leaders. That is underway at the minute, so that issue now gets set aside, and we're talking about the heritage plan, and I would ask you to confine yourself with that. I know what's been set aside, convener. Uh, the, uh, but the point is uh, to ask the, the, the Chief Executive a question, and an I responded to that, that particular answer. An yeah, I was in the process of responding to that particular Mr. answer. Mr. Goldie, you want, you want Mr. Goldie, he said I could finish. Oh, finish right, thank you. 
The uh, asked the chief executive a specific question, and uh, the follow up to that is that uh, if it's known anywhere, if it can be contained within the report, any precedent, any benchmark that, that can be brought that uh, we have the, the opposition of a majority on a cabinet, then I'd, I'd very much appreciate that, that particular <coughs> knowledge. With regards to, to the report, can I ask uh, Leslie how closely it links to the council's own strategy for a uh, the uh, for for the heritage? For the, yeah, for the built environment, absolutely. I mean, the, the two dovetail together. We work very closely with um, uh, development services in terms of uh, where. Uh, kind of interpretation and understanding of heritage touches on their their statutory and uh, and regulatory responsibilities. So we were very mindful of that document um, in preparing this. We'd had close discussions with uh, development colleagues in development services as well to make sure that the two documents uh, uh, mirror and dovetail where where appropriate. Yeah, the you, you've been asked to, to, to benchmark. Do you, do you recognise the, the request? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think what what we've set out, is, as Councillor Meikle John said, is a very high level strategy, and it's a strategy for the area. It's not a, so the trust has prepared it, working with a range of, of, of local partners. So we've set a series of outcomes in the uh, in the action plan. Some of those outcomes are for the trust to deliver upon, and some of them are outcomes that, that other uh, organisations have put put into the uh, into the action plan. So we will be measured, the trust will be measured on, A, its ability to work effectively, I suppose, with all these other partners, but we'll also be measured in terms of our own PIs that uh, we, we regularly report to the Council Scrutiny Committee. Um, so I suppose the two things are, I, I recognise maybe you might want something a bit, uh, a bit, a bit tighter in terms of uh, benchmarking. I think that's that would be for us to talk to partners about to say, well, how concrete can we be, given that we're at the beginning of a, a beginning of a process rather than at the end of the process. Yeah, I mean, it's also maybe worth adding that we have funding from uh, Heritage Lottery Fund, uh, which we led on working with uh, colleagues in Falkirk Council, Scottish Canals, and Central Scottish Scot Scotland Green Network Trust. So we have four hundred sixty thousand pounds. Uh, HLF money to develop four strands which are, uh, are set out in the strategy. They, that came quite late in the day mm -hmm. and so that's got a very, yeah. very rigorous targets attached to it. That's a three-year project and it, it was developed very much with the Council's built heritage, heritage environment strategy and the, this um, uh, uh, community-wide uh, heritage plan mm -hmm. in mind. But I'm not quite sure where the link comes to, to, to the benchmarking exercise. Well, because the, 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 what we've set, the work plan that we've set out to HLF uh, very much mirrors, that, that sets some very kind of key benchmarks that we have to meet in order mm -hmm. to draw down funding. There are a number of projects set out within the Great Place funding bid, uh, and we will have to report very rigorously on those to the Heritage Lottery Fund, and we'll also be reporting to, to partners on that. Leader of the Council intimated that uh, there was some work undertaken with regards to additional funding is it leader, leader funding? Yes, <coughs> we've had a, a, a brief, brief uh, interchange on that. I, I think part of trying to work more effectively together across the, the, the partnership is about trying to leave it in new money. As mm -hmm. I think I said earlier, there's, there's, there is only existing resources for each organisation attached to the delivery of this plan. Mm -hmm. So what is key over the next three, three to five years is about levering in new money in order to deliver projects. Have you looked at the issue of leader funding subsequently? Subsequent, we just had an email exchange yesterday, but that's something that's uh, kind of at the top of my list to, uh, to, to have a conversation about, and uh, to look into that. Okay, thanks very much. Okay. Thanks again, convener. Putting this back a month ago, I think it's unreasonable. Uh, if it allows us to get the further background information that's been requested, we've already heard from the officers it's not going to impact on the trust by putting it back a month. So, in this case, I'm quite happy to support the motion. Okay. Anyone else? Convener, <clears throat> I just uh, want to make an observation, as I always like to. Um, when, when looking at the report, I think it's an excellent report in terms of what it's trying to achieve. Um, I noticed that heritage is a catalyst for action, 
and in general terms, action is usually split. On the one hand, we have a dichotomy in the West, which basically says strategy on the one hand, operational practice on the other. And when looking at, if we're looking at this uh, very carefully, I'm, can I assume, I'll ask a series of questions, not ask, one ask you to answer each question individually, but basically to say that within the strategic approach in terms of this document, I do take it that you had extensive consultation with community organisations, agencies and all types of stakeholders and took on board what um, all those myriad of agencies, community organisations, etc. had to say. On the question of operational practice, um, I, I take the point that Councillor Nicholl is making about benchmarking, but operational practice, when we're talking about action plan, planning, usually means outcomes and measuring also, not just the outcome, but the impact that that um, project or programme of projects will have on the community. Would I be right in thinking that on the terms of the operational aspects, for example, in terms of Keneal, um, that you will have taken on board um, the historical aspect of James Watt and his steam engine and all kinds of things and, it's, and the impact that, that that has had on the community from a her heritage point of view. So in a sense, you don't really need extra benchmarking approaches. You, you are also fulfilling the, the action plan because it's also part of lottery funding which will have set out a strategic approach in terms of what you have to do. So I I'll slow down there. I won't ask thousands of questions, but, um, but I think you get a flavour of where I'm coming <coughs> from. I do, yeah. No, I'm happy to, happy to come back on that. I suppose, uh, did we undertake a range of consultation? Yes, there were two phases of consultation in, in the, the development of the plan. Uh, at the first stage, working, speaking to local community groups, local heritage groups, um, professional agencies, in the drafting of the plan, before the plan was drafted. Uh, that then went to our board for approval, and then we sought approval from uh, the, the leader and portfolio holder to go out to consultation. And they, at that stage, back in November, uh, councillors Michael John and Spears made a number of points which we've, we've uh, taken on board and included in the plan. We then went out to formal consultation, so that was an online questionnaire, a specific invitation to organisations who'd previously been involved in the consultation uh, to, to come back on the final version of the plan. And I suppose it's worth noting that we, 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 the Friends of Keneal in particular did put in a number of uh, comments back in uh, January, which we have responded to fully uh, in the, the document that was circulated by Fiona yesterday. Um, I think a lot of the points they make are actually taken up by the Keneal Master Plan. So there's already a very detailed master plan for, for Keneal Estate in place. And this is very much a, a, a strategy that sits at a higher level, and therefore it is a strategy for the whole area. I think that we received no other... Uh, we see, received minor comments around you know, tweaks, uh, references, for example, to uh, the, uh, emphasising the role that libraries play, for example, in local heritage. And so a lot of those comments we've been able to take on board. Um, the, we went to say we we didn't we responded to the friends of Keneal to say that we'd responded to their um, their, their their comments um, and where where appropriate changes were made to the plan but more importantly I think it's you know the role of the Keneal master plan in terms of taking the aspirations for the estate the estate forward and that includes projects around the, the work that Historic Environment Scotland is doing on James Watts Cottage uh, plans for celebrations around that event they'll be very much at an operational level and we'll be working in partnership with uh, and the Keneal Estate Advisory Group will be the mechanism for doing that in terms of operational planning um, outcome and impact I think as I said earlier uh, we have uh, a set we have a, a business plan and our unit action plans within the trust and those will dovetail with 
objectives so far as we have control over uh, uh, the delivery of this plan. Similarly, organi other organisations will have their own operational plans. Um, where the, the idea of trying to bring a, a folk heritage alliance together is to try and ally those plans, operational plans more closely together so we, 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 we kind of build capacity and we actually maximise the use of um, what are actually quite limited, limited resources. I hope that answers your comments. Um, yes, yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask the portfolio holder his views on the benchmarking and uh, the strategies. Strategy is an overall uh, encompassing um, stance we want to take up and to, to move the direction of heritage forward. Um, deliberately is, is it's slightly different, as you're well aware, there's everybody in the council, you can have the best strategies in the world, but you, uh, delivering them is also fraught with the practical difficulties on the ground. Benchmarking is usually done on delivery, but strategy you can't benchmark because each area is different. The benchmarking for West Lothian, Glasgow or Edinburgh isn't it particularly relevant to the strategy that's going to be um, forthcoming in Falkirk District? So when we make up a strategy, we don't make it up on other areas. We make up the strategy for this area. Once the strategy is through, you can work on the delivery of that strategy. For instance, um, and I'll take the Friends of Keneal on, there's different partnerships working with Keneal at present. There's, uh, we're going to go forward and look for leader money, which includes that particular area. And I think um, Bowness and the, the Keneal Estate will be well served in the future under this strategy. But we can't make a strategy for just one park, one area. We need to have a strategy that encompasses the whole area. And we can't benchmark that against other cities, towns or districts because... And I'm proud to say we're different here in Falkirk and we will bring forward a strategy that represents this area and we will deliver on that. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Okay. Sum up. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if anybody else wants to speak. If not, then you can sum up. Okay. Yeah. The benchmarking, of course, convener isn't against other towns and cities. It's against the aims and aspirations to establish how successful they are over the term of the uh, period. And, you know, it may, may have been a good idea to have uh, had a look back at the previous uh, plan just to see how successful that was in meeting the aims and aspirations that were set out uh, a number of years ago. So there's, as I said, convener, uh, I accessed this for the first time uh, yesterday, being appointed to this committee, but unfortunately being locked out as frequently happens of, of my iPad, so I, I got access to it yesterday. It is an important document, and a lot of work has been done uh, uh, to it, and I'm certainly not uh, wishing to detract from the, the work that was done there. My criticisms come from two points. First of all, we don't really know what the background papers are saying. They're just uh, reduced to often just no more than a sentence, so it would be good to have a better feeling of just what's coming forward from the communities, because... As I said earlier, every member around this table, I'm sure, um, has had representations from various groups uh, over the years uh, on the role of the Trust. And um, secondly, <coughs> just to uh, enable the Trust, and, uh, and to be fair to Leslie, who's a fine officer, I don't think, uh, I'm not putting words in your mouth, Leslie, but I think you understood that it might be quite useful to include some benchmarks into it to you know, just be a check on what the progress is as we go through uh, the, the, the plan. Um, on regard to, to, <coughs> to the month, I think that's generally been agreed that that's not going to uh, up scare the horses. <coughs> and um, I would just hope that uh, members would, in the circumstances, you've been criticised for... Uh, this morning convener for not letting members speak, not letting members having the facts. Well, I would say that any member who was not supportive of this continuation is denying me, who hasn't really had time to study this and certainly not study the background papers, 
uh, my right to get a full uh, <coughs> feeling uh, on this uh, uh, very important document. So I would hope, convener, that we could all uh, agree that, uh, especially since we've heard from the officer, that a month is not going to uh, make any difference and we'll come back a lot better informed uh, in a month's time. So I hope everybody can agree to the continuation. Well, just before we go to the vote, um, well, hopefully we've well, we'll got the motion is with so I just wish to um, continue with um, the amendment to approve the strategy. Um, I think Councillor Nicholas forgets that these papers were circulated to all members. Everyone has access to the executive papers um, a week beforehand. And um, I, I think that that um, is, is disingenuous to other members who have taken the time to read those papers. Notwithstanding the, the, the comments made from the Friends of Keneal, um, I <coughs> take them very, very seriously, but I do believe that these are not at the strategy level, they are at um, the delivery level, and I'm sure that that can be worked on and accommodated with them. I know that there's been work ongoing um, in the last few months talking to the Friends of Keneal. In fact, I spoke to one of their members just very much at the weekend. Um, on this particular matter and, um, and that was where we, we spoke very much about um, the, the access to the leader monies and, and the difference that that could make there. Um, I don't see that holding the strategy up, which is a high level strategy, as the portfolio holder has said, for the whole of the council area um, based on that one particular um, matter um, is, is particularly appropriate. Um, I do believe that the, the points that they've made are relevant um, but that is something that could be discussed out with this co committee along with the Friends of Keneal and the other parties in taking it forward. Thanks, I just point out to you that Mr Nicol had in fact closed the debate because he was in the motion. But, however, uh, that, that's fair enough. We've heard for, for Fiona and she has said that it won't make any difference in delivery of this if it's held up for a month. We've all received the paperwork and the emails from the Friends of Keneal which uh, might I certainly concentrate my mind on this, so we're going to go to the vote, Mr. Thank you, Convener. The motion is moved by Councillor Nicholls, seconded by Councillor Harris, which is to continue <coughs> consideration of this item to the next meeting of the Executive. The amendment moved by Councillor Meikle, drawn and seconded by Councillor Garner, is to approve the Heritage Delivery Plan in accordance with the recommendations in the report before you. Councillor Alexander. Councillor Bissett. Councillor Garner. An amendment. Councillor Goldie. Motion. Councillor Harris. Motion. Councillor Hughes. Amendment. Councillor Kerr. Motion. Councillor Nicol. Motion. Councillor Nimmo. Motion. Councillor McHugh. Amendment. And Councillor Michael John. Amendment. There are six votes for the motion. There are five votes for the amendment. The motion is carried. Okay, thanks for that. The next one is Treasury Management, Brian. Uh, this report sets out the Treasury Management Strategy for the financial year 1819. Uh, uh, consistent with the Treasury Management Code, it requires first to be considered in this forum before being referred on to, to Council. In terms of the process during the year, uh, there will be an interim report uh, in the autumn advising progress against the strategy you have before you this morning, and then there will be an outturn report uh, roughly a year from now that sets out how things transpired in practice. Section 4.1 uh, provides a, an economic backcloth. I think the essential point coming out of that is the expectation that interest rates will rise. Bank of England have recently um, sent strong signals that a rise is expected in May and possibly a further one later in the year. So clearly that's quite significant for management of our portfolio. <coughs> in terms of the borrowing strategy, and uh, that's set out in section 4.2. In the table at 4.2.4, you can see the overall level of the Council's uh, debt. Uh, 245 million, and in the table below, para 425, the anticipated borrowing requirement in the current financial year, uh, close on 54 uh, million. Obviously, there's a judgment as to what point in the financial year we go into the market and uh, activate the, the necessary borrowing requirement. 
The other side of the equation uh, from borrowing is set out in 4.3, and that's the investment strategy. Um, and as you will have heard me say before, the fundamental approach here is, um, first of all, we are concerned with the security of any money we have out, and we're talking pretty big numbers here. So that's uh, criteria one. Then we look at liquidity, which is the ease with which we can get that money back quickly, if we so wish. And only thirdly, do we then turn to consideration of the yield or the return we get from the uh, investment. There are a range of instruments that we can invest in under regulations. Uh, they are outlined in uh, para 433. Uh, also, our investments very much informed by the main credit rating agencies in terms of um, those that cross a uh, quality threshold, which is set very high, bearing in mind we're dealing with public monies here. For information, 4.4 4, um, advises that we're in a transition stage here with our banking arrangements, uh, Royal Bank having won uh, the tender, so there's quite a uh, operational challenge in terms of migrating from one bank to another, but that's live at the moment. 4.5 sets out the uh, suite of treasury indicators that will be used, and they're designed to help uh, give comfort that the treasury operation is uh, operating within um, appropriate risk parameters and not unduly exposing the council. Section 4.6 uh, deals with um, the Prudential Code and indeed uh, the Treasury Management Code, which are sister codes. Um, there's been a few updates um, to the content of those as they've been refreshed and they're outlined in that section. Uh, 4.8 uh, reflects the requirement under uh, new regulations to provide uh, further information on the operation of the loans fund. Um, in my own view, what's been asked to be produced here is perhaps a little bit over the top, but there are regulations and we consequently require to adhere to them. Um, essentially, the deal with the loans fund, which in very simple terms uh, operates like a bank. Uh, we borrow from the market or, for the most part, in practice from the Public Works Loan Board, and then we lend out from that uh, source to services uh, to allow them to make the investment in schools uh, and other capital investments, building new council houses, for example. And the service over the years repays that debt, and that then is used to repay <coughs> the original supplier of the debt, whether that be the market or the Public Works Loan Board. Um, 410 just touches on the, the need to keep an eye on uh, training, both for officers and indeed for members. And if we can just skip back to the front of the report and pick up the recommendations at 2.1, uh, you can see them set out there, convener. Happy to take any questions or provide any clarifications that members may wish. Thank you. Um, not the, the most enthralling of subjects is Treasury management, but very, very important um, to um, the Council and our financial strategy. Um, I have to say that um, Mr Schmeel has um, it served us very well in, in giving us lots of information and explaining things as, as um, succinctly as, as he can, and, and something that's very, very complex. Um, I believe that our Treasury management strategy is very robust. And um, with all the, the financial regulations around it, I think we do well to get the best out of it um, in, in order to, to feed into our, our um, financial management programme. Um, I think um, the training for members has been helpful. Uh, I think we learn every report, uh, Mr Smale, something new um, around Treasury management and our borrowing. Um, and, and that's something that's is very important that we do. Um, yeah. um, I wish um, everybody well in our new banking. Um, if anybody has tried to change their, their own personal bank account, never mind a large organisation such as a council, um, they, they know how challenging that alone is. Um, uh, so to, to actually do it on a, a wider scale, um, I hope that we can manage to do that um, very effectively and um, that there's, there's nothing there that would give us cause for concern. I'm happy to move the report. Shake that. 
I can be there I'll formally second. Okay, I can remember uh, when I jumped the other week <coughs> some time ago. Anybody, any questions or comments on it? Or do we accept the report? Right, good. Can I ask you, I won't ask Brian if he has a, a, a policy up his sleeve for, to deal with Brexit, uh, but uh, what I will ask is if there's sufficient flexibility within the, uh, the, the strategy to deal with the issues that may arise through, through Brexit. We're less than a, a year away now from the, uh, that particular change. Yes, Councillor, Councillor Alexander. The, the, the strategy, uh, certainly the boring strategy, uh, which is really what you're concerned with here, is inherently flexible, uh, and we don't commit ourselves to borrowing at particular rates or at particular periods, uh, <coughs> length of periods of loan, or at particular times in, 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 in the year. Ultimately, it is a judgment. And, of course, there's a whole raft of factors that uh, colour the um, economic backcloth We've got an emerging trade war between the states and um, China. We've got recent events in Syria, and so it goes on. And, of course, Brexit is a, a major area of uncertainty, uh, and it remains to be seen how all those things un unfold. So th those events, those global events, do ripple through to economic factors, which in turn ripple through to interest rates. So we've got to take views on how we see things going. And as I say, that ultimately leads to the judgment as to the timing you go into the market, what rate you take, and what length of period you'd borrow for. But I can give comfort that there is an underpinning flexibility in what we do. It's certainly not rigid. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Can we accept the report? Okay, thank you.